the Planning and Environment team. With me today is Rachel Turnbull, a Senior Associate in the Regulatory team. We both deal with various environmental issues in our day-to-day -day jobs, which covers contentious and non-contentious environmental matters. Rachel, what do we mean when we talk about waste management? So waste management means the obligations that a business has to both store and handle waste correctly and also dispose of it when it's uh, no longer needed on site. Um, so the amount of waste, the types of waste, uh, whether it's hazardous waste or non-hazardous waste, is all going to be determined by the business itself. Um, so we, we obviously can't cover every different type of waste in this short presentation. However, there's a number of themes that are uh, that run through all waste management, which we will touch upon. I think this, the key thing to remember is that given the potential environmental implications, um, waste is highly regulated. There's a wide range of legislation that covers uh, waste disposal and waste handling. So what sort of things do we need to factor into our waste management planning? So it's always useful to think about the different types of waste that you're likely to encounter at the very start of a project. So thinking about uh, the nature of your business, what types of waste are likely to be generated. Uh, this is particularly the case when you're going to have large volumes of waste. So things like uh, construction and development sites, uh, site clearance works, so where you're going to have a huge range and potentially large volumes of waste. What that means is that if you uh, miscalculate or misjudge the different types of waste that are going to be on site, it can have huge cost implications. Um, so if you, you know, miscalculate how much hazardous waste there's going to be versus non-hazardous waste and that's going to have a huge uh, impact on the profitability of the venture. You also if you're thinking about waste in uh, sort of ahead of time you can think about um, sort of the waste hier hierarchy whether you're going to be able to reduce waste whether you're going to be reusing it recycling it. Um, thinking about that in advance means that you can factor in um, you know things like if you're able to reuse some of the material that you're generating on site, so waste soils, rather than shipping it out um, to try and get, get it off site, you may be able to factor that into future development, either on a different site or also where you are um, doing the work. Um, the other thing to think about is the risks of the different types of waste that you've got on site and factoring those into your planning. Um, so knowing the specific risks of your site are you next to a um, particularly susceptible site? Maybe it's a specially protected environmental site. Maybe it's a watercourse. Um, but thinking about how that is likely to be impacted by the waste that you're storing. Do you need to um, you know, have specialist areas, protected areas on site that you can store the waste? Um, again, thinking about things ahead of time. Um, you can think about obtaining best prices in terms of waste disposal. Uh, these days, things like landfill tax and other costs of waste disposal are huge. So if you know that you're going to have a certain volume of waste um, that you're likely to dispose of, you can think about how best to organise that to make sure your disposal costs are as low as possible. You can think about having uh, regular collections of waste as well. So making sure that you don't build up too much uh, of a particular type of waste on site. Likewise, if you have something like a, a waste exemption or an environmental permit, um, there's likely to be limits in that as to how much waste you can store on site. So it's really important that you make sure that you're not going to go over those limits. Finally, uh, think about waste management planning. If you invest a, an amount of time at the start of a project or at the start of a business venture, it is likely to significantly reduce the amount of time that you're going to have to consider those issues over the duration of the project. So, like I say, getting getting waste off site in a timely fashion, making sure you've got um, contractors lined up who are prepared to give you um, the best rates to get rid of the waste as and when you need it. So how can we prevent or limit the consequences of incidents from poor waste planning? So I think one of the key things to make sure is that you're complying with the regulations that are in place that are specific to the types of waste that you're handling. Um, because of the sort of fairly serious consequences of poor waste management, the industry itself is very highly regulated and therefore there's a lot of uh, very specific legislation that covers things like waste batteries, waste electrical equipment, um, soils, uh, chemicals and there's quite often we come across situations where we're perhaps undertaking due diligence in a transaction 
and we come across businesses that just haven't been aware of the regulations that apply to the work that they're doing. Uh, one of the common, the most common examples of that is um, the packaging regulations. And we quite often find that businesses just aren't aware that they've uh, qualified or that they are now obligated under those regulations. So by making sure you're aware of the relevant regulations, but also then making sure that you apply, um, you follow those regulations. So for example, they'll give you advice within the regs as to how you need to store waste, any limits on the volumes of waste that you need to store. Well, the packaging one's quite interesting as well because the thresholds are relatively low. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a case of if you handle 50 tonnes of packaging or you've got turnover of £2 million pounds or more, and obviously two million tends to catch a lot of uh, catch a lot of businesses. And now, like I say, that's the one where some people just don't realise either when they've initially set up the business, they may have been under the the thresholds, and um, but very quickly they've realised that they are now uh, above the thresholds and haven't been uh, submitting the necessary returns. And that's the thing; it's very easy to comply with that regime as well. Um, you know, you can be part of a compliance scheme, and that can that can deal with it all for you. And the, but the consequences if you don't uh, can be very severe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of um, the Environment Agency, for example, will uh, quite often uh, penalise companies in the form of a civil sanction um, and the cost of those. They have a, a particular formula for working out how much um, a company should have paid over the years that it's been non-compliant, and then they'll add a penalty charge on top of that. So you end up, or you can end up, if you've been non-compliant for a number of years, with a fairly significant financial penalty to pay as a one-off. I think the other thing that businesses need to be aware of is it's all very well to have a uh, waste management plan at the start of a venture or the beginning of a uh, a site construction project, but it's really important to keep that uh, management plan under constant review Um, because obviously as the business grows, you may take on uh, the manufacturing of new products or you may move into a different phase of a development um, and the sort of the waste management requirements and the issues that you might have on site are likely to develop as you move through the different phases. Um, for example, if you're, um, you know, on a construction site, you may be in a pro- in a phase which requires a lot of um, landscape clearing, uh, different topography than what you were previously working on. Um, so, and also things like working in different seasons can have a real impact on how you can manage the waste on site. So, do you need to be doing things like um, suppressing uh, the stockpiles of soils that you've got on site? Uh, Do you need to be sealing those stockpiles to make sure that they're not um, eroded in heavy rainfall, things like that? We often see when providing transactional advice, transactional support, that businesses aren't fully compliant with waste management regimes. And it's it's a really important step to to undertake post-completion, isn't it, in terms of looking at, at those practices and when a business is acquired or a, a company is acquired to, to really get, into, get to grips with it properly. Yeah, and I think as well as part of the transaction, because with a lot of environmental legislation, um, things are based on turnover or size of the business or potentially number of employees. So when there is uh, a takeover of business or a merger, for example, uh, you may then be pushed over a certain threshold and you may be caught by legislation that previously you weren't uh, caught by. And also, you know, those times are... Uh, really convenient times to have a look at the policies and procedures and the waste management plans, et cetera, that are in place and think about whether they are still fit for purpose or whether they need to be um, sort of revamped in light of the transaction. And I think then the final thing that I would say in terms of making sure you are preventing or trying your best to prevent any issues is paying particular attention to hazardous materials or particularly uh, risky environments. So you'll know if as part of your business, you're likely to be storing significant amounts of hazardous waste on site. And if you, if you are, then you need to think about how you're going to store that. Where is the best place on site to store it? Things like, do you need to think about, um, protecting any storage tanks? Do you need to put barriers in place? Uh, Do you need to locate them away from areas of high traffic so that they're less likely to be, um, hit by, uh, passing vehicles? Also thinking about um, how are you going to keep a track of what waste is on site so that you don't exceed any limits that are in your your waste exemption or your permit. Um, is there somebody that's keeping a, a, a regular sort of eye on what's going out to site, what's coming on to site? Likewise, if there's any particular risks for that particular site, so have you got a local residents nearby, a residential area, or a protected environment nearby that you need to keep a, you know, 
keep waste away from, particularly if it's likely to cause uh, significant issues. Who has responsibility for planning and managing waste and hazardous materials in the business? Uh, well, really, it's for the business as a whole to ensure that it remains in compliance um, with all types of waste legislation. Um, however, in reality, this is most easily done by ensuring that there's a particular person or a particular department, depending on the size of the business, that undertakes the checks and makes sure that um, the business is complying with its own duty of care. So why is waste management such an important issue that we need to spend time and resource on it? Well, obviously, um, from a business perspective, um, managing waste properly and efficiently is likely to enhance profitability. Um, also, sort of drive some efficiencies within the business if you're aware of um, where you're generating waste, if there's anything you can do to reduce that waste. Um, it's always cheaper or usually cheaper to have an overall plan for waste management um, and deal with it from the outset rather than deal with it piecemeal as and when um, issues come up. Uh, like I said earlier, this means that you can usually get better deals in terms of waste disposal contracts. Um, and you can also avoid um, the costs of having to quickly uh, get rid of a large amount of material if you realise that um, it's becoming unmanageable on site. As we've touched upon already, um, there are compliance issues which can have quite serious uh, financial implications. Um, a lot of environmental offences have potentially unlimited fines in terms of uh, if you're prosecuted for a breach. Um, these will often be related to turnover as well. So if your business is high turnover, um, then the, the financial sanctions can be really quite significant. And then finally, the, the other thing to think about is if you are convicted of a criminal uh, environmental offence, often you have to dis disclose those when you're um, submitting tenders for uh, certain types of work, particularly uh, public contracts. Uh, so obviously that can also have a significant ongoing uh, cost implication for the business. So in summary, what sort of practical recommendations do you, would you make to try and minimise any issues like this arising or, or in responding to these sorts of issues? Uh, well, I think as I've mentioned already, obviously preparation is key. Have a plan and make sure that you uh, continually review that plan to uh, account for any changes on site or any changes in your operations. I think it's also important to, to know when you aren't competent to deal with it. So you need to be able to seek advice, whether um, you've got a, an issue, whether you're getting complaints from local residents, you know, that, that could be a, a sign that obviously something's not going quite right and you need to either take legal advice or get an environmental consultant involved to come and look at your site with an independent set of eyes and identify where you can make improvements in terms of waste management. On a practical side of things, you need to think about um, how best to store waste, how you're going to dispose of it, what checks you're going to put in place to make sure that any contractors that you employ to remove waste or to manage waste on your behalf are legitimate. They have got um, the relevant uh, registrations that they, they need to take your waste away and also that they're taking it to legitimate sites because you have a duty of care not only to manage the waste on your site, but to ensure that it is getting uh, taken to and disposed of at a reputable site uh, that has the correct authority to deal with it. So what should you do if things go wrong? Um, I think the first thing to think, if you do, even if it's just a minor issue, to be conscious that that could be the start of a much bigger issue. A lot of our clients have failed to recognise um, when potentially very small matter has gone, has arisen um, and they've nipped it in the bud. So therefore it's become a much larger um, incident that they then need to deal with. But if a major incident has occurred and a business hasn't been able to take these more preventative measures, mm -hmm. what would you recommend then in terms of reacting to that more, more serious incident? Well, you need to think about whether you um, need to notify the regulator um, this can be a bit of an alien concept for some people because why would they volunteer to uh, to notify a regulator? But actually that can have uh, beneficial effects going forward. So think about notifying them. You also need to think about how are you best going to uh, stop the incident occurring. Um, so it may be actually that you need to stop operations on site. Um, and obviously there's going to be cost and production issues involved in that. 
but you may need to do that even just for a short amount of time so that you can um, resolve the issue, get material off site if you need to. And then finally, once you have undertaken your internal investigation and you've uh, got some lessons learned or you've worked out what the cause of the issue was, it's important to make sure that those messages are disseminated across the business, um, whether it's just your, that one site or whether it needs to be spread uh, across a number of different sites to make sure that there are no recurrences in the future.